This video is being made to try to equip our people, which is always very important to us. We want you to learn uh, all that you can about how to follow Jesus. As you know, we work very hard to make sure that as many of our people as possibly can will learn how to share their faith. And so on this particular project, I want to equip you as a parent to know how to lead your child to faith. Uh, not at all to press that issue, but to be responsive uh, to their growing awareness of Jesus uh, and their need to follow Him and to know how that you can uh, follow a process uh, to be a part of seeing that come to pass. Quite often through the years, uh, parents have called and relied on pastor or staff uh, to work with their children, and that's fine. We're willing to do that. But we recognize that uh, as a follower of Jesus, you ought to have the privilege uh, of helping your children make decisions. And so what I want to do is give you some thoughts and some tools for your tool chest that you can use in sharing with your children about Jesus. First, let me say that you are very important in your child's faith journey. Uh, in fact, it is really important that your child see your faith uh, in order for their faith to be nurtured. Uh, they need to hear you pray sometimes. And that may already be the case, or it may not be easy or common for you, but they need to hear you pray. Uh, they also need to know that you're familiar with the Bible, that, you're, that you actually read the Bible. Now, I'm not suggesting that you stage something, but it's a healthy thing for our children to see us open the Word of God. Uh, they need to see you behaving in ways that are consistent uh, to what Christ would have us uh, behave and live. And uh, they are going to notice the difference. And it really nurtures their faith when they see their parents following a standard that seems to come from the Lord. Uh, and it's amazing how readily children uh, can pick up on that. And I realize that's a, that's a real challenge to us, but it's such a good challenge. If we could learn to see the way we handle ourselves and the way we handle our life as a part of reaching our own families with the gospel, I think it's helpful to us. It's an extra motivation to us above our love for the Lord just to know that that matters. Now, I'm not suggesting that if you're not doing all those things super well that uh, you shouldn't be able to share with your children. What I'm saying is that all of those are a part of sharing with your children. We always stand ready to help someone who may still be clarifying their own understanding of what it means to be a Christian. Uh, we're ready to help you with your children, and so we're not trying to get out of doing that. But we do want to equip you and perhaps even provide for you some additional help about your own faith journey so that you can in turn be a good leader to your family. So, um, just because a child comes in and says, you know, I saw Johnny baptize Sunday and I think I'd like to do that. That doesn't mean that they're ready to follow Jesus. And I think we understand that, but we need to know how to respond to our children when they begin to show an interest in following Jesus Christ. Whether that means saying, I want to be baptized or I want to become a Christian, what they say is not so important as clarifying exactly what it is that's on their mind and why it's on their mind. So uh, your response to that is always to say, well, that's exciting or that's good, but can you explain to me why? Why do you want to be baptized if that's what they say or uh, what do you mean when you say you want to follow Jesus? I know what that means to me. Uh, can you explain to me what, what you mean? And let them begin to share with you about what they understand. Uh, it's important for you to ask open-ended questions, questions that don't just have a yes or no. For instance, a child comes in and says, I want to be baptized. And you say, well, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Well, pff, a child that's been in Sunday school and church, what are they going to say, you know? We, we have to realize that uh, a, a yes or no question is not the best way to discern what our child understands. We need to ask questions that allow them to talk. Um, uh, and we, we can talk about things like being saved. Well, what does it mean to be saved? Uh, and so that we can learn from what they say. And it's really not a test. A child may answer on a child's level of understanding. But the point is to walk them through the question that they've raised in such a way that you learn more about what they understand. And I've done this many, many times with children. 
Well, I talked about tools, and so I'm going to give you two of them today. The first one, let me represent with an index card. And this index card, you could produce this. This just happens to be one that was produced in our office. But basically, it is a card based on Romans 6.23, which says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I'm going to switch out that index card and get this larger piece of paper with the same material on it and let you look at that with me. And notice what I've done with that verse. It's Romans 6.23. There's a cross. You could easily draw a cross in the middle of a card or a piece of paper. And then just write the word wages, sin, and death. And so here are those open-ended questions that you can ask. What are wages? Now, there may be a child that that word is not a word they're real familiar with, but you can begin to talk to them about how we earn things. There may be something in your family structure that they understand how they earn things. Well, if you'll make up your bed, you can go outside, those kinds of things. The wages, what are wages of sin? And then here's another open-ended question. What is sin? And so the child can begin to Usually their first response, if they have an understanding, is it's things that I do that don't please God or things that I do wrong. And what I always do when they give me that answer is say, it's also things we think and things we say. Um, so that I help them see that sin is more than just doing wrong. It, it's that there's something wrong with us. Uh, that causes us to do those things that are not pleasing to God. I sometimes point out that the middle letter in the word sin is I. And listen to me carefully. Sin is I trouble. It is recognizing that I'm in charge and I want to do what I want to do. And so that is at the root of what it means to be a sinner. All right, And then the other word that we emphasize on this side is death. What is meant by death? Now, a child may not grasp this completely, but they need to understand what spiritual death is. They need to understand that it's being separated from God forever. And my second uh, illustration and tool for your toolkit will help you with that one. But, uh, but they need to understand that the issue with spiritual death is being separated from everything that's good and from God forever. So that's what happens when we don't deal with sin in our lives, okay? Now then the word gift. We've moved across now from this side of the cross to this side. How do you get possession of a gift? And then in parentheses I have you don't earn it, but you must receive it. So helping them understand that even though it's a gift, some people reject gifts. Other people receive gifts. So we can talk about salvation as a gift. Not something that we achieve by being baptized or by joining something, but something that we receive as a gift from God. And our response to that gift involves certain things that we'll begin to do. All right? The operative word here in the center is eternal life. What is eternal life? It's not just living forever. Sometimes people say, well, that's living forever. Living forever as a selfish person would not be a blessing. It's hard for people to realize that, but unless we deal with sin, living forever as we are would just get worse and worse. So we have to help our children understand that eternal life is a different kind of life that lasts forever. It starts here. We receive eternal life right now, right in the midst of our life today. And we live that out here and forever in eternity. And then finally, the word in the second part of the verse, Jesus Christ. We must accept Him, His forgiveness, and His life in us. Uh, Jesus Christ is the means whereby we receive everlasting life through Him. And He becomes the one who is the Lord of our life. And what you need to see in that verse is... Uh, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What does that mean? A child may not really relate to the word Lord, but they understand the word boss. And so what we want to talk about is Jesus has the right to rule. Now, if he rules, that takes care of my eye trouble. Life becomes more than what I want to do. 
it becomes what would the Lord have me to do? See that? So there's one tool. And uh, again, remember that uh, if a child, when you start that process, if they seem disinterested in what you're telling them, or if they just don't seem to be relating to it, they may not be ready. Um, there's more to being saved than, than thinking, oh, that'd probably be something good for me to do. A child sometimes can think that, especially if they've been around church a long time, when the Holy Spirit is not really drawing them. They're not mature enough yet uh, to really grasp what it means to commit their life to Jesus Christ. And you can't really put an age on that. I've seen people at the age of six uh, make a decision that was very real and one that they remember for many years. Uh, and then others, perhaps it's later. And we, it's not competition. Uh, we're not trying to see whose children can come to Christ the youngest. Uh, we need to be very sensitive and, and uh, have a dialogue with our children and try to understand what they do grasp and whether or not the Spirit seems to be drawing them. And if the Spirit is drawing them, it will stay on their mind and they'll be more attentive to your instruction in most cases. And I'm not saying there are not some exceptions, but usually it's the case. If the Spirit is dealing with them, they really want to understand and they really want to, to lay hold of what it means to follow Jesus. This is a tool that I've been using with children, including my own children, for more than 40 years. Um, I've used it with adults because it is often effective with them. It's just to take an ordinary piece of paper. Now, I'm going to use a whiteboard, but just to take an ordinary piece of paper and, and draw something that resembles a canyon. Now, I'm no artist, but remember what I said about what is eternal death? I said it, it's separation from God. See, the nature of being lost means that we're separated from God in life. Uh, he, his influence is with us, and every good and perfect gift comes from God, and we may experience a lot of blessings, but we don't have fellowship with God. And so when a person, when their life ends and they still don't have fellowship with God, then that just extends through all of eternity. And uh, the reason it's so dreadful is it just gets worse. Remember that I said it gets worse when we don't deal with the I trouble in our life, the selfishness, that I in the middle of the word sin. Well, when we don't deal with that through life and we go into eternity, uh, we continue to regress, not progress, but regress in destruction, uh, separated from God. And it's all based on that, that, that determination to be our own God. I'm not suggesting that you need to share all that with your children, but I want you to understand principally uh, what I'm illustrating here, all right? So let's just draw a little stick figure right here, and this is any person. Could be your child, could be mine, could be me, could be you. But the point is, we come to a place in life where the Holy Spirit makes us aware that we don't have fellowship with God. We know some things about God. We've heard some things about God. Perhaps we've heard a message. Uh, perhaps we've read some scripture, and we realize that we are not connected with what we're hearing or reading or seeing. And uh, so we're here and the question comes, what am I going to do about this? Well, the natural tendency would be to build a bridge. And the usual bridge is good works. Okay? Now, I'll just be good. And if I'm good enough, I can reach God. Even our children grow up thinking, well, I can offset the bad that I did by doing good. And, and the natural tendency is I can reach God if I can just somehow get across there so I need a bridge. And so basically, uh, you could put any number of bridges. You could put, well, my parents, you know, believe in God and I'm their kid, so I'm okay. Or you could, you know, you could just come up with all kinds of bridges here. You could say, well, maybe I won't do good, but I just won't do bad. And, and so I'll really be careful not to do any of the things that I happen to know are bad. Uh, or uh, you could say, well, I'll just be at church every time the doors are open. And not that that's a bad thing, but it's not going to reach God. You see my point. So uh, all of those bridges, even though they're, they're not bad things, of course, they're just not going to fix my problem of separation from God. Because just like we saw in Romans 6.23, the bridge is Jesus and what He did on the cross. And on the cross, He took my sin, which kept me separated from God, 
and he died for my sin. He took my sin out of the way, and he made me holy like God is. What does holy mean? Holy means that I am pure, that I am righteous, that I have right standing with God. Not because of what I've done, but because of what Jesus did for me. Because of what was true about Jesus. So now I have access to God through Jesus Christ. And those things that I was talking about, doing good and all that, I, like, I think they make better banners. You know what a banner is? It's a little flag that celebrates something. They make better banners than they do bridges. Uh, they are ways that we express our joy at being a child of God and, and that we sincerely love Him. They're like little gifts that we want to offer to God of service and ministry uh, and, and gratitude for what He has given us, remember Romans 6.23, as a gift. So there's a couple of tools that could be used. Now here's another thing. Um, most children are intrigued by baptism if they've seen it. And what I always want to be sure that I tell them, and I encourage you to do the same, is that there are two issues. One is, I want them to understand that baptism is only meaningful if we understand what Jesus has done for us. And the second thing is, I want them to know that their baptism is a celebration of the decision they've made. It is a way of bearing witness to Jesus. Look at my hand. Think of a person standing in water. When they're lowered under the water, they're saying, I believe Jesus died and was buried. When they're raised out of the water, they're saying, I believe he rose again. But they're saying something else. They're saying, I want to lay down my life with all my eye trouble. I want to lay down my life and I want to rise up to live for Jesus. So those two things are being said simultaneously. That is only appropriate when you understand what Jesus has done to save you, and why you needed to be saved. And so these are some of the things that you need to share with your children. As I said, it's possible that you've learned something today that even you need to act on, and that's fine. But it's possible that these are just some things that will help you know how to discuss with your child. Now let me give you a personal illustration, uh, and I'll close. One of our children, when she was a little girl, told me one morning, Daddy, I received Jesus as my Savior last night. And I did what I'd done before. I got a piece of paper, just like I described to you, and I drew this little diagram and drew the bridges and, and talked to her about how those things won't bring us into right relationship with God. And then I flipped the paper over, drew a cross, talked about how Jesus paid the price for us, and gave us access to God, and how we show our love for Him and our joy in Him by living ways that are pleasing in His sight. And sure enough, she understood all of that. It was pretty obvious. Uh, she made her decision public and was baptized. A very short time after that, she spent the night with a friend whose father was dying of cancer. And there was another little girl there. So there were three little girls, our daughter and two other children. And one of the girls said, I'm so afraid for my daddy. But she said, I'm also afraid of death. And the other girl said, oh, I'm afraid of death too. And our daughter said, I'm not afraid. And they said, how can you not be afraid? And do you know what she said? She said, do you have a piece of paper? And she sat down from memory, from only one time seeing this drawing, and drew it just like, just like that I drew it for you a little while ago. So my point is that these tools, think about how children think and how they learn and you can make an impression on them that will not only benefit them, but may become a tool in their tool chest to share with others. God bless you as you do.